Dirty Beasts by Roald Dahl, The Ant Eater. Some wealthy folks from USA who lived near San Francisco Bay possessed an only child called Roy, a plump and unattractive boy, half-baked, half-witted and half-boiled, but worst of all, was dreadfully spoiled. Whatever Roy desired each day, his father bought him right away. Toy motor cars, electric trains, the latest model aeroplanes, a coloured television set, a saxophone, a clarinet, expensive teddy bears that talked, and animals that walked and squawked. That house contained sufficient toys to thrill a half a million boys, as well as this young Roy would choose two pairs a week of brand new shoes. And now he stood there shouting, What on earth is there I haven't got? How hard to think of something new. The choices are extremely few. Then added, as he scratched his ear, Hold it. I've got a good idea. I think the next thing I must get should be a most peculiar pet, the kind that no one else has got, a giant ant eater. Why not? As soon as father heard the news, he quickly wrote to all the zoos. Dear sirs, he said, my dear keepers, do any of you have any ant eaters? They answered by return of mail, our ant eaters are not for sale. Undaunted, Roy's fond parents hurled more messages across the world. He said, I'll pay you through the nose if you can get me one of those. At last he found an Indian gent. He lived near Delhi in a tent who said that he would sacrifice his pet for an enormous price. The price demanded, if you please, was 50,000 gold rupees. The anteater arrived half dead. It looked at Roy and softly said, I'm famished. Do you think you could? Please give me just a little food. A crust of bread, a bit of meat. I haven't had a thing to eat. In all the time I was at sea, for nobody looked after me. Roy shouted, No, no bread or meat. Go find some ants. That's what you eat. The starving creature crawled away. It searched the garden night and day. It haunted every inch of ground, but not one single ant it found. Please give me food, the creature cried. Go find an ant, the boy replied. By chance upon that very day, Roy's father's sister came to stay, a foul old hag of eighty-three, whose name it seems was Dorothy. She said to Roy, come, let us sit out in the sun and talk a bit. Roy said, I don't believe you've met my new and most unusual pet. He pointed down among the stones where something lay, all skin and bones. Ant eater, he yelled, don't lie there yawning. This is my ant. Come say good morning. People in the USA have trouble with the wind, the words they say. However hard they try, they can't pronounce a simple word like aunt. Instead of aunt, they call it ant. Instead of can't, they call it can't. Roy yelled, Come here, you so-and-so. My aunt would like to say hello. Slowly the creature raised its head. Do you mean, that's the, that's an aunt, <laughs> he said. Of course, cried Roy. Aunt Dorothy, this aunt is over 83. The creature smiled, its tummy rumbled, it licked its starving lips and mumbled, A giant aunt! By gosh, a winner! At last I'll get my decent dinner. No matter if it's 83, if that's an aunt, <laughs> then it's for me. Then taking very careful aim, it pounced upon the startled dame. It grabbed her firmly by the hair and ate her up right then and there murmuring as it chewed the feet, the largest ant I'll ever eat. Meanwhile, our hero Roy had sped in terror to the potting shed and tried to make himself obscure behind a pale pile of horse manure. But Antita came sneaking in. Already it was much less thin and said to Roy, You little squirt, I think I'll have you for dessert. Oh, wow. 
Anteater, Dirty Beasts by Roald Dahl. <laughs>